I'm Matt Prater from Vision Christian Radio in Australia, and I'm the biggest fan of The Chosen ever. I'm really happy to be talking to Dallas today. How are you, my friend? Uh, so good. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Mate, I was one of the early adopters. I started watching in season one. We made donations. We were believing that it was going to change the world. And here we are, almost season four. Uh, tell us about season four. You know, there's a lot of people that haven't seen it yet, uh, seen, you know, one, two, and three. Yeah. Uh, let's try and convert people. Why should they watch The Chosen? Well, first of all, thank you. Thanks for having me on and for your kind words. Uh, the Chosen is a historical drama. So whether you are a Christian or not, whether you're a believer or not, and we, and uh, you may have skepticism going into this. In fact, I would say 80% of our viewers started out reluctant. They either didn't want to watch another Bible show, uh, they thought it would be cheesy or poorly done like they, a lot of other ones they've seen, or they were faithful Christians who were concerned that it wouldn't be biblical. Uh, and they've seen things that maybe aren't directly from Scripture, and so that concerns them. But one of the things I would say is, if you listen to the people who've seen it, and now it's anywhere from 150 to 250 million people have seen at least one episode, the common thing we hear is, uh, either if you're a non-believer, it's, wow, I found myself binge watching all three seasons because this is a historical drama and I love good television and I'm interested in seeing stories of the most influential human ever. <laughs> um, or if you're a believer, people saying, wow, I have never thought of this before and it's making my experience with Bible reading even more enriched. Uh, no one is saying it's replacing the Bible for me. They're all saying I'm reading the Bible more or I'm more in love with Jesus than before. And now the Bible has come to life for me in a way that maybe... I, it couldn't quite when it was just words on a page for me. I'm a more visual learner, so now it's helping me. All of those things have been proven true over these first three seasons. Season four, this is where things really get even deeper and richer, in my opinion. Uh, this is the midpoint. This is the beginning of the end. This is where we explore some themes that are uh, more mature than anything we've explored. If you look at season three, that was challenging too. Uh, Simon and Eden, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it yet, but Simon and Eden experience a miscarriage while at the same time they're seeing other people healed. Little James, who is crippled and is a follower of Jesus, uh, played by an, a handicapped actor, uh, asking questions of, hey, you're asking me to heal others, and yet I haven't healed, been healed. What is that about? The asking questions that we ask today. And in season four, we go full on into that. We experience loss. We experience suffering. Jesus is sad in season four because he's getting closer and closer to Holy Week. And um, when you see Jesus sad and Jesus frustrated, which is from Scripture, it makes you go, my goodness, uh, how do we avoid that in the future? How do I avoid making Jesus sad? And uh, that's hopefully uh, what happens in season four. But I think just watching all four seasons or the first three seasons, if you haven't seen them yet, is going to give you a wide variety of emotions that hopefully is true of most good television. Well, I can't wait to see it out in cinemas. It's going to be massive. And, you know, I just had shivers up my spine when you were just talking about little James, who is an actor who has cerebral palsy and scoliosis, because um, my son has cerebral palsy. And I'm a pastor. I see people healed regularly in my church and in my ministry. Uh, my son, who's 18, uh, hasn't been healed yet, and we're believing for it one day. And we cried. We wept in that scene. I'm crying now. Um, mm. Just because you brought in the reality of not everyone gets healed, uh, but you can still heal others. Uh, you are tackling those tough subjects. Um, tell us why you're going there and you're you know, doing these controversial things in your show because it's, you know, it's making people ask a lot of questions, isn't it? Yeah, and I think, well, thank you for sharing that. Um, I think that if we're going to be authentic in this show, we have no choice but to explore all of the questions and struggles and doubts that people face when it comes to Christianity. Why does yeah. God allow suffering? Why does he heal mm. some and not others? Uh, where mm. is Jesus in the midst of war, of oppression, of tribalism? Uh, the, mm. the disciples at that time, the, the followers, the, the, the Jewish people at that time were thinking, okay, Messiah's here. That means we win. That means yeah. we, we win a war. That means we overcome our oppressors. And when that didn't happen, that caused a lot of confusion and frustration. And yeah. I think today, when we look at this, we, you look at someone like uh, Nick V or Johnny Erickson Tata, heroes of the faith today who have been either uh, experiencing suffering for decades, or in the case of Nick uh, Vujicic, who's got no arms and legs, who believes that he could be healed, but hasn't been. Why is that? 
And you mm. can't look at Nick or Johnny or anyone else and go, they don't have faith. They're not faithful and, uh, and, and, and passionate followers of Jesus. So what is the deal? We have to explore those questions or otherwise we can't give any answers to the skeptic that are believable or rational. And so mm. I do believe there are good answers to those questions, but you don't get to those by glossing over the pain or the struggle. And the Christian walk is oftentimes suffering. Now there's a I joy the and a peace. There, yeah, there's a yeah. joy and a peace that passes all understanding. That doesn't that doesn't uh, make us immune from the from the suffering. Yeah, I love the way you tackle those subjects, uh, like uh, Matthew being on the spectrum uh, as well with Asperger's. I love the way you tackle those things, and you know because they were, they were a bunch of ordinary unschooled fishermen and and tax collectors, and you know they're a ragtag crew, and you paint that uh, picture very well in the in the series. Now uh, a lot of people have asked me, you know. Uh, on, a lot of people are surprised that not all the actors and, you know, the, the crew are Christians. Um, are there many stories and testimonies of people going, yep, okay, this is the best thing ever. I'm in. I want to be, be a follower of Jesus. Are you, are you hearing stories like this? Well, of course. And and I don't, I don't share names or, you know, personal stories from within our family uh, of the chosen unless they choose to. And, uh, you know, there's been a few who have gone public with it, uh, uh, Nick Shakur, who plays Zebedee, has been very vocal about his uh, conversion experience on on the show. Um, but yeah, it's it for us. It's similar to you know if you hire a, a team of people to build your house, or even if you want to go further, build your church, or print a Bible and deliver it to people. You're not going to ask the testimony of the driver of the truck that's delivering the Bibles. You're not going to make sure that the owner of the printing company uh, has the same, uh, not only faith, but denomination that you do. Uh, you want the best people. Uh, you, you, as long as the message doesn't change, the content doesn't change, you want the best people for the job. And so on The Chosen, our cast and crew come from a wide, wide range of backgrounds, faith traditions, lack thereof. Uh, we just, as long as you're willing to work hard for the show, and so many of our uh, our family members uh, on the cast and crew work so hard for the show, even though they don't share the faith of maybe some of our viewers or of myself, I think that's a beautiful thing. And uh, yes, we've seen many, many stories of people who've been impacted by it on set. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, my job is to make the best show that I can that honors Jesus and the Gospels. And uh, whoever can help me do that is is welcome. Well, Dallas, thank you for all you're doing, mate. We're praying that the world will be impacted by season four and the and the next ones to come. Are you going to come down under and visit us in Australia one day? A hundred percent. I have so many friends from Australia. John, uh, the apostle, was played by an Aussie. Uh, I uh, I can't wait to get there eventually. I promise you I will come and we'll make sure that uh, we say hi in person. Awesome, mate. God bless you. Thanks for your time. 